So the Grand Wizards of the Coast are at it again, and this time they have managed to successfully upset the entire political spectrum with their recent decision. You guys remember that a couple of months ago they decided to end racismus in the United States by changing the race of the orcs, by changing the race of the dark elves, and as such racism has been abolished from America. Now, many people were saying that, no, you know, I'll play my homebrew campaign. I do not care about the nonsense that the people at the Grand Wizards are pushing. And apparently, you may not play your homebrew campaign because uh, you might get visit from lawyers, according to the new controversial change. Now, there are two main reasons why Dungeons & Dragons is as popular as it is. One of them has to do with the TV show Stranger Things, which caused a massive uptake in the amount of people that showed interest to the game. The other one has to do with the open game license, which the Grand Wizards of the Coast released years ago. And what the open ga game license allowed people to do was to create their own versions of the game using the Dungeons & Dragons system. So this is why we have Pathfinder 1, Pathfinder 2, many other games. And the idea was that some people are going to get interested into Pathfinder and eventually they might move and start playing Dungeons and Dragons. And as you can imagine, there are many companies and competitors that operate their entire business model on these games that were allowed to exist at the time. However, with an update to the open game license, the company is now asking for ridiculous things from its competitors. So first one is uh, to pay a 25% tax which is ridiculous. I mean, most small businesses are going to be unable to even exist on the market. Another one that's even more bizarre is that all the competitors of Grand Wizards that want to use the Dungeons & Dragons system have to provide the Grand Wizards with all their projects, present and future, and inform the Grand Wizards about them. I mean, this is ridiculous. Um, if you create something that is popular and you use the Dungeons and Dragons system, then the Grand Wizards basically own that property and they can sell it and merchandise it. And the worst of all, which upset the entire community, is that with this open game license, you would not be able to play virtual tabletop games. Which is another reason, I would say the third reason, on why Dungeons and Dragons is so popular. Roll20 has popularized this game a lot. Because nowadays, Get it, you know, in the modern world, getting people to meet up at your house or in a place and actually just play the game physically is very difficult. So most people prefer playing it online. It's a lot uh, more convenient to find friends. I mean, I from Romania have played this game with Arch from Norway, with Sargon from Britain. I couldn't have done this if I actually had to meet with them in a place and play the game. But now apparently that wouldn't be allowed. So everyone is upset about this. Especially when the Grand Wizards are so incredibly greedy. I mean, they already make $1.3 billion in 2021. Right? But they're looking at the community that's very vibrant. And it's really large. And they're saying, oh, well, why can't we have some of that money? Kind of reminds me of how Blizzard acted when Dota became popular. So I remember that the creator of Dota, this used to be a scandal at the time. Wanted to actually work with Blizzard, but Blizzard didn't want them at the time. So then they uh, happened to go with Valve, and Blizzard was very upset. But not only that, they were also very upset regarding the fact that Dota was popular and it used the Warcraft 3 engine. And obviously they couldn't monetize it. I remember there were people who didn't even like Warcraft 3 who purchased the game just to play Dota. Now, what happens when Warcraft 3 Reforged comes out, they were in the TOS... A statement that if you make a mod, it belongs to Blizzard. Like, you give your IP to Blizzard if you create a mod. And I remember the quartering was mocking that, but not only the quartering was mocking it, there were people on the internet that were creating very interesting mods. Like, for example, surviving the Holocaust, and you were in the furnace, and, and like people had like the Jewish hats and stuff. Like, they created mods in order to mock and ridicule Blizzard as the company. It's like, okay, so you want my IP? Congratulations, you now own this. Uh, that there were other mods where um, you, you are playing cowboys and you are shooting Indians with a bow and arrow and stuff. And, and all of this was the community giving the middle finger to Blizzard because they did not appreciate what they were doing. 
And this is literally the same, but worse. So now you have this uh, open letter that is being signed by many people from the industry. So if you're passionate about tabletops, you're worried about this. Well, there is some good news because obviously this is uh, a lot better than a change.org petition that no one likes. It's better than people threatening with a boycott. When you have leaders of the industry, especially um, if they're distributors, and they will say, okay, well, we may boycott your game if you decide to do this, then maybe Hasbro is going to listen. Then maybe the, the grand wizards of the coast are going to listen. Hopefully they will at least dial it back to the point where it's going to be possible to play the games online. Because, again, the, the problem is, I have heard a lot of lawyers on YouTube saying that this is not enforceable. But many companies won't risk it. Even if it's not enforceable, you still don't want to get sued by a large corporation. Because you have to be dragged into court, you have to pay for lawyers, you have to do all of these things. So, a lot of companies may just drop the tabletops. And again, this is not about Dungeons & Dragons, it's about the spin-offs. Like, if you happen to like Pathfinder, if you happen to like uh, the 13th Age, Fudge, Traveler, and, and all these other games, right? then you're not going to be able to play them in the future. I don't like Dungeons & Dragons, to be honest, anymore. Especially after the people who run it are making these awful decisions. I do not feel like... I think that 5 edition is really great if you're an entry-level person. But if you want something more sophisticated, if you want something more interesting, 5 edition is definitely not for you. And also, I do not like the vision that the current leadership of Grand Wizards of the Coast are having for the company. I do not like the fact that uh, they want to add DLC and milk people constantly for their money. Instead of trying to focus on a 6th edition, they're just removing things that they find offensive from the 5th edition. They're removing spells, they're removing characters, they're removing uh, important traits that the races used to have. They're removing all of that because that's where most of the energy is spent. And instead they're giving you microtransactions and gaming as a service bullshit. So... If you want to support that, that's fine. I personally do not. So I don't really care about what happens to Dungeons & Dragons. But I do have a lot of friends that care about all of these other games. Which were born because of the open game license. And the fact that the company initially allowed its competitors to get into this market. Which now it seems that they are being trapped in. So we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, let me know what you think. And now you understand what the controversy is about. If you want to support the channel, there's a link into the description. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. Like, this is the funniest, but this is like Darth Vader level. Uh, the Grand Wizards can modify or terminate this agreement for any reason whatsoever, provided we give 30 days notice. Right, so imagine you're a business, and you're like, okay, well, let's sell a game that's based on Dungeons & Dragons. And you create your own Pathfinder. And then the Grand Wizards say, all right, well, we're going to raise the, the the percentage, the tax, to 50 now. And you're like, oh, fuck. Well, I can't have a business anymore. And you already invested all the capital. You invested all the money. It's very difficult to do deals, like to, to actually operate a business when you have a contract like this and say, oh, well, we can modify it at any time, 30 days. No, fuck off. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the comment section.